Bonjour, it's time to look at the French defence and we are now going to start a new mini-series on this way of meeting 1e4 from the black perspective. Now, the French defence is an opening that I've played throughout my life. Um, it's the first opening I ever learnt against 1e4 and it's really projected me to the position I'm in now, so to Grandmaster level. And it's a very interesting way of meeting the move e4. It can be in a very aggressive opening as well, and it can lead to some very interesting positions. But it also sets up just the nature of the opening, a very solid pawn structure at the start. So you're basing a lot of your activity from a very solid position. Now, in this video, which is the first of, like I said, mini-series covering everything to do with the French defence, I believe there's going to be seven mini-videos in this, so quite a lot for you guys to watch, but then you'll be, hopefully, an expert in the French defence as well. We are going to be concentrating on the advanced French. So this is the main French defence structure here, you see in front of you. And this is an opening black uses against the Kingsborn opening, 1e4. And it's where we go e6 and d5. Now, already you can see from this pawn structure, we should point out some things, that this is a very solid formation. You have this kind of pawn chain in the middle, which gives you a nice basis in the centre of the board. And I thought we'd start with the advanced French, after the move e5 for two main reasons. Number one, I find at lower level, e5, the advance variation to be the most common move that white will play. And number two, often in the French defense, you get this pawn center, which you see here, this locked pawn center with the highlighted pawns I've uh, demonstrated there. And in the French defense, it shows us some typical ideas that we need to use to get some good positions using the French. And I think it's a very good starting point for us learning more about the French defence. Now, there's two things you should really remember, structurally speaking. When you have this locked centre, so when white has gone e5, black normally relies on two pawn breaks to attack white centre and to open up the pieces. Those two pawn breaks are mainly c5 first, very important move, attacking the d4 pawn, which is one of white's main weaknesses. And the other pawn break, which you often can use in the French defense, is f6, attacking the other pawn that white has in the center, e5. Now, a lot of people discussed the bad French defense bishop. We should just point out that your worst piece is often the bishop on c8 in the French defence, because it's locked in behind the pawns. But often this bishop can come to life. I mean, b6 is one idea. And you even see a very common plan being shown with bishop d7. This is later on in the game, when you have played f6, and the bishop coming to e8, and then flying out to either g6 or h5. So these are all common ideas, common places to put your pieces. Now, in the French defence, generally black has less space, but I say it's a very aggressive opening because you always strike out against white's centre, and that's what you should do in this position with the move c5. Immediately putting pressure on d4, and in the French defence advance variation, the square d4 is the main weakness that white has, and the main attack attacking plan from black is to aim to attack this, the base of white center. I mean, white does have a space advantage and this pawn on e5 can often give white a good basis for an attack later on. So you have to keep as black attacking the center. So now white should nearly always go c3. And here white adopts a very strong pawn chain as well. Each pawn guards each pawn. If white doesn't go c3, then you'll be able to capture on d4 next and break up white's central formation. This is not something we have to worry about. So c3, and here we need to bring our pieces out whilst attacking the d4 square, which is our main target for now. So knight to c6, very common idea. 
pressurizing d4. The main line here now is knight to f3. White trying to keep the pawn center intact and developing a piece defending on d4. And now the move I'm going to recommend here is the move bishop to d7. Now queen to b6 is the other main line here where black pressurizes, keeps pressure up against d4. But I prefer this move bishop to d7 for two main reasons. Reason number one, it's a very useful waiting move and your rook can come to c8 often. At some point, black nearly always captures on d4 and then after white recaptures with his c3 pawn, you have the open c file. So this is uh, one good reason to put the bishop here. And it waits to see what white plays here because your queen on d8 normally comes to b6 to pressurize d4. But in some positions, you can move the queen to c7 to pressurize e5 in some cases. It normally only goes to c7, your queen, when you have played your other pawn break. Hopefully you can remember what that is. f6, and then you have taken on e5, therefore weakening the e5 square. So you're kind of waiting and seeing which target you attack. Do you attack d4 or do you attack e5? And then only when you know where which pawn to attack do you move your queen to the adjacent square. So this is really, I'd say, our main starting point for the French defence advance. And we're going to take the main game of Shabalov versus with the white pieces versus Alexei Shirov with the black pieces. But we're just going to have a look at a couple other plans during that game. A lot to cover here. Obviously, French defence, a main opening. And I should say, I mean, if white ever takes on C5, then you shouldn't be worried about this move. You simply take back and now white's pawn center is weakened. Which square in the middle is now a target? This is what you should be thinking. And of course, now it's the e5 square. The e5 pawn is now the target because it can't be defended by another pawn. And this type of position, you should aim to go f6. Use your other pawn break quickly so your knight on g8 can come into the game. So in this position after bishop d7, what can white play? Well... The two main moves are either bishop to e2 or a3. Now, in my opinion, bishop to e2 is a much better move. And in actual fact, the move a3 here is a mistake. Now, you might be wondering, why is a3 a main move? Well, white wants to advance with b4 and gain more space on the queen side. But by playing a3, white is neglecting his development and he's playing a move on the side of the board, and we should counter this by playing actively in the center of the board. So what do you think we should do here? F6, we use our secondary pawn break. Remember, we nearly always go C5, and then when the timing's right, we go F6. Of course, you have to be a bit careful when you play the move F6, because it does kind of weaken your king on E8. So you need to make sure white doesn't have a lot of pieces that can take advantage of this. In this position, white doesn't because white has played the move a3. So after f6, there's a, a couple of possibilities here. Now, white can either try developing his bishop, playing b4, or even taking on f6. So let's just have a look at these one by one uh, very briefly. Well, if white ever takes on f6, you'll get this kind of structure a number of times in the French. You should nearly always take for your knight. And here... You'll see this in the Tarish later on in another video we look at. Black has great play. Black wants to put the bishop on d6, wants to castle kingside when you have the open f file, and generally put your queen on c7 when you're attacking on the b8 h2 diagonal. So if white ever takes on f6, black gets very active pieces, and this is where you can get some great attacking games. When we don't need to worry ourselves too much about this particular variation because black is very very quick development and has an advantage here. It doesn't make sense for white to give away the center like that. Now another option is b4 and what happens after b4? Well there's a very nice line here after the move b4. We can actually now, we should concentrate in the center of the board and actually now we should take on e5 and the general rule is, in the advanced French, if you are able to go f6 and take on e5, and your opponent takes back on e5 at some moment, 
We swap off as much as we can on e5, so we force a white pawn to e5, and the general rule is now we can see that we haven't developed our queen too early, so we don't need to put our queen on b6, always try to move our pieces to squares where they have a purpose, and in this type of position, queen to c7 is a much better square for the queen. Where we are attacking e5, and in actual fact, if you want to play some crazy aggressive chess here, you can castle queenside next move. And again, you have the open f file later on for your attacking place. So this is a very pleasant kind of position. So if you are ever able to take on f6 on e5, so let's say after b4, you take on e5, even if white takes back with a pawn. Now that you have created a weakness on e5, because you've removed this defender, the pawn on d4, away from the defense of e5, your queen then goes to c7. And queen c7 here would be a good move to play. Now, there's one very amusing line, actually, here after the move f6. And that is after you take on e5, so b4, um, white can even try to move b5 here. And you have a very promising piece sacrifice here. Now that is the move, knight takes d4. And this just demonstrates how interesting and counter-attacking the French defence can be. From a very strong foundation, you can get some extremely exciting positions. And I really like this piece sacrifice. After white takes the knight, we take with our e-pawn. And we have, look at this mass of pawns in the centre. This now resembles a game of Space Invaders rather than a game of chess. I mean, if I can do the Space Invaders soundtrack, deal deal, deal deal, deal deal, deal deal, deal deal, these pawns are just going to run up the board, and they they are just too strong to stop. They they really do take over the position. And again, how do you develop with Black? Your knight goes to f6. Put your pieces in the most active square. Simple. Bishop on d6, best diagonal, and castle kingside. So all these positions after the move a3, so let's just go back to the main position here. I, I'm suggesting bishop d7. If white goes a3, he's played a move on the side of the board, so logically speaking, you should strike out in the centre with the move f6. And I really, I'm a really big fan of this type of position. And I think it works especially well only if white plays a3 because he's not developing a piece. So what else can white do here instead of a3? Well, there is a gambit line that white can try. I don't believe it. The gambit line is the Milner-Barry gambit. And that is where white plays bishop to d3. Now, after this move, bishop to d3, it is correct now to take on d4 because white is breaking his defense of the d4 pawn. And after c takes d4, well, where do we want to move our queen on d8? Remember, always think logically, does it go to c7 or b6? And it goes to one of these two squares, depending on which pawn you want to attack. If you want to attack e5, it goes to c7. If you want to attack d4, it goes to b6. Here, you want to attack d4, so queen b6. And now this gambit goes in the lines of castles. Knight takes d4, and white takes on d4, and now plays knight to c3. I'm not going to spend too much time in this. All I'm going to say here, that a safe option in this position is pawn to a6. This aims to stop any knight b5 tricks. Don't get greedy and take another pawn. Just go a6. And this Milner-Barry gambit, I do not believe is a good gambit from white side. The black queen, when chased, can come over to h4, and you can even try to attack the white king. I think this is a very bad gambit from white. Um, so really, the only other move instead of bishop d3, is bishop to e2. And bishop to e2, I'd say, is the main line. This is the move that Shabalov tried. And this makes more sense because it means it doesn't block the queen's defense of a d4. And here, well, I'm now going to recommend we play knight to e7. f6 is an idea here, and you can play like this, but it's not as effective in this position because white has developed a piece, bishop to e2, rather than played a slow pawn move, a3. Because white has developed a piece and is ready to castle, I think it's not correct to open up our center of f6 so soon. So I prefer the idea here of going knight on g to e7. Now, I just want to give you the quick plan here. We're going to see it in action in a second. 
This knight on e7 is heading to which square? Always try to think where your pieces should go. Well, nearly always the knight goes to f5. From f5, we pressurize d4, and this is the target we are trying to pressurize. Get all our pieces attacking d4. When our knight gets to f5, we are not generally afraid of white ever playing g4 because that will weaken the white king's side quite a lot and expose his king if it castles over there. Remember, you shouldn't push pawns in front of your king. So our general plan here for black is to try to pressurize d4 with knight to f5, queen to b6, and just keep playing it like this. And let's see how Shirov handled the position against a very strong player, Shabalov. And, uh, well, white now play knight to a3. And the idea of this move is white sees that d4 is his weak point, and he wants to bring this knight back to c2. Now, as a general rule, as soon as white plays his knight a3 in the advanced variation, you should capture on d4. Just remember that as a rule. Now, I should point out, if white ever captures on c5, this is nothing to concern yourself. Which pawn is now weakness? Remember, every pawn move white plays, he, he creates a weakness on one of his other pawn squares. And this time, e5 is no longer defended. Now your knight can actually come to g6. There's no point going to f5 anymore because it won't be attacking anything. On g6, though, you're going to win a central pawn back. And if you get two extra central pawns, you'll have a fantastic position. So Shabalov played this move knight to a3. And generally, when this happens, you should always take on d4. Why do you only take on d4 now? Maybe you can work this out yourself. The point being... After white goes c takes d4, look at this knight on a3. Now that it's moved to a3, it cannot come to the c3 square. White would generally love to put his knight on c3, but he can't do this anymore because he's already moved it to a3. So actually, this is a very crafty move order idea of only taking on d4 when white has moved his knight to a3, because then he can't get his knight to the best square. So uh, yet again, we have to ask ourselves, which square are we going to attack? And it is indeed the d4 pawn. So we need to put all our pieces onto squares where we attack this pawn. And Shirov played it beautifully to demonstrate that here. Knight to f5, knight to c2. And now where should the queen go? Queen to b6. Black has three pieces all attacking d4. White castled. And now a very nice plan from Shirov. And at the time, this was a new idea. Black, of course, could go bishop to e7, castles kingside, and then rely on his secondary pawn break. Can you remember what pawn break that was? Hopefully you can. f6. So that is one idea. But Shirov here played knight to a5. And this does seem strange at first sight. But what Shirov wants to do is swap off his worst piece. Which is that? That is, as we stated in the introduction to this game, the bishop on d7, because it's stuck behind the pawn structure. So this is a very clever idea, knight to a5. Shirov wants to go bishop to b5, swap off his worst piece for this bishop on e2, which is generally a very good white piece, and then continue with his plan. Let's see how this worked. Shabalov, Shabalov a very aggressive player, played g4, but the knight just came back to e7 now. And now white has created a bit of a weakness on his king side, and we're going to see Shirov attacking this soon. Knight came back to e1. White wants to advance with f4. Black now gets rid of his worst piece. Bishop b5, very nice manoeuvring. Knight came into d3, not allowing the bishops to be exchanged. And here a great move from Shirov, pointing out why this g4 was a little bit premature. h5, opening up the king side. White took on h5, and now we have gained, again, control of f5 for our pieces. So the knight comes back to f5. Bishop to e3. And now the other knight hops back to its best square. And look what Shiro's done. He's moved this bishop from d3 over to b5. And it's much more effective on this diagonal here. And we'll just see a little bit more of the game. a4, bishop c4, b4. And now the king side is where black wants to attack. D4 
is quite well defended. So queen d8, lovely idea, trying to get the queen over to h4. Bishop g4, and now knight takes e3, f takes e3, and queen g5. And we won't look at much more of this game. It's not too relevant for our opening survey. It's good enough to say that black has a big advantage here. Black can castle queenside. He's threatening rook takes h5. The white king is more exposed than the black king. Black has better pieces. And it's a very pleasant position to play. And Shearoff went on to win in very good style. So just to go over the main points of this opening, the advanced French. The French defense is, of course, you go e6 and d5 on your first two moves. And after the move e5, you play c5, your main break, break number one. Your secondary break in the French defense is f6. You can play this when the timing is right. But c5, you nearly always play first. And this aims to pressurize d4. White should try to keep control of the d4 square with a pawn. If white does not keep control of this square, and let's say he takes on c5, he will lose good protection of the e5 pawn. So c3, the main move, and now we develop our knight. Note that every black move has a purpose in the opening, and it's normally to attack d4 or to attack f6. So just remember that. White develops knight to f3. Can you remember the good, simple waiting move now? Bishop to d7. Preparing rook c8, and we're just waiting to see if our queen goes to c7 or b6. Now, a3 is a mistake. White is playing too many pawn moves, and how do we punish that? We punish that by going f6, our secondary break. We are better developed, so we aim to break up the position with this move. If black is not faced by the move a3, but instead bishop to e2, well, here f6 is not as effective because white played a developing move. Now we aim to attack d4. Where do we put our pieces to attack d4? Knight comes to e7, and then to h f5. Note that this is probably a safer way rather than going to h6, because if you go to h6, white can take your knight here. So knight g e7, and after this move, something like, well, knight to a3, and as soon as the white knight goes to a3, we can take on d4, because the knight doesn't no longer come to c3, and then we just attack d4, knight to f5, queen to b6, and then if you play this clever idea, knight to a5, at some point your bishop can come to b5. So that's basically really our overview of the French defence advance. Hopefully that gives you a very good sort of feeling for the kind of moves that you should be trying to play when you're playing the French defence, and the especially advanced French. And you'll see this type of structure you see here occur a number of times. So get used to it. Hopefully you'll be happy playing it. And I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun playing the French. So keep a lookout for my other videos in this series.